Mm -hmm. That clock's wrong, guys. Yes, it is. <coughs> yeah, I got ten minutes. Uh, a couple minutes to go anyway. Yeah, I got stuck in the snow. I'm gonna act on this one quickly, and we wait for those guys to show up. I know it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 This first one's not going to take very long. No. We all could be sitting here looking at ourselves in session. Yeah. While yeah. Oh, why show you, up? You, you think Lincoln's waiting for a half an hour or so? They could be. Yeah. I don't think so. Huh? I don't know. I hope they get here at 7. You never know. you got to be here when the meeting starts. I hear something. What's all the cars going on? Uh, withdraw. Uh, what? All the cars in the parking lot? I don't know. Yeah, quite a few. Tonight? Tonight? Hmm. Uh, I think the church there usually has some events. They do uh, like mixing some crafts and uh -oh. events and stuff. Usually we have Wednesdays. The parking lot's pretty empty unless there's yeah. a big meeting going on. Okay, I hear a door. <laughs> We're waiting for you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Do you think we haven't started yet? Not no, you, yet. no, the clock's wrong. <clears throat> what? <laughs> what? 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 I have a couple people that are interested in applying for ZBA. Um, do we currently have a vacancy? Yes, we have do. one vacancy for an associate member. For associate, but the members are all full. Yes. At the moment. Okay. Uh, right. Um, okay. So um, I only have the one applicant. I'm going to get the other one in, and we're going to interview them to see you know in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if there are any resignations that might be coming, we do have people waiting in the wings. I just wanted to let you know so that we are prepared to, to replace you. We cannot fill a vacancy until a resignation is received and it is effective immediately. Um, so, but we've got them. All right. So as far as I know, we just got a, we got a resignation <laughs> yeah. pile. I think. Yeah, Has that come in? <laughs> I think is it is. Andrew has got a designation in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, we so have that's one. the associate vacancy. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we do have one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I will, well, I guess we're probably still waiting for the developers, right? Well, yeah, we're waiting for them. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to let you know because Bob gave me the heads up that okay. um, so ready when you are, essentially, is what we're I, we need to see if there's any other cases that are coming up early January. Um, we have 374 Main Street, which is a variance request at the car wash. Right. And then we have the continuation of 61 Summer Ave in March, March 2020. Yeah. I'm not yeah. worried about that one. <laughs> at the moment, is that it? Yep. No. And yes. actually, the car wash, even though it's a continuation, we never discussed anything. Didn't discuss because, anything. Uh, nothing. So it's that's right. Right. It's like it's brand new when we mm -hmm. discuss yeah. it in January. So is there a time when you would like to see any new members seated? Because we can work towards that. We're dealing with that on conservation right now where they have a meeting on the eighth and so we're working with get someone in so that they have four. So if you're in a similar situation where there's also starting um, if you'd like to have the new people on the and there's only one other case coming in, that's the 15th, 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 
So the BASC introduced them, the Volunteer Equipment Subcommittee, and that's me and Andy. Uh, and so there's a couple people for a couple different positions that I kind of squeeze in um, before that first week of January. Uh, so we'll interview them. Uh, because the, the meetings are public, so if you want to come and chat or ask us, you start the first one. Exciting stuff. Which is my duty. It's actually, I, I, don't know, I find it um, So yes, so we are planning those interviews for those that have applied. And I know there's one other person. Still not there, but that's which is why we got So we're well, we're well positioned. First time to decide about the board. Okay. So let's get them in well. While the pickings are good. Okay. Good. Okay. Good work. Hey, Ray. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. All right. Floor is yours. I will uh, open this session of the zoning board. We uh, have two cases to discuss this evening, actually one, and another one under other business. The first one uh, is a continuance of uh, case 19-14, 104 Salem Street. And I w I did, we did receive a, uh, a letter dated 16 December and it's addressed to dear Mr. Chairman on behalf of my client HB Development Corporation I respectfully request that the Board of Appeals allow the above referenced application to be withdrawn without prejudice at this time thank you for your anticipated cooperation yours truly Brian D. McGrail Esquire so they're pulling out after five continuations Yes. Uh, Sorry, can I ask a question? Correct me if I'm wrong. That was an appeal. I'm not mistaken of the building inspector's uh, rejection of a building permit for that. Yes. So it this wasn't an application for a special permit or anything. He might have said application, but I believe it was yes, an he appeal. Did, he he did was say. appealing the building inspector's uh, decision. Right. Well, the actual the actual reading was. Uh, going way back and yeah. all the continuous blah 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 on the application of Brian McGrail on behalf of so and so to, to for an appeal for an appeal, appeal. of a okay. decision. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So is there any discussion at all? Well I, I would like to see if the big home inspector has any new information on this. What's what's the story with it? The last well, thing out is was they were going to move or they were pouring a new foundation they had moved the house, they were going to move it onto a new foundation and correct. And keep the so the foundation's in place. Yeah. We just got the new certified plot plan showing it meets all the zoning. So they're about to place the old house on the new foundation. So the it's you know, I don't want to say it's a moot point at this point, but I was just gonna say I was just gonna use that word. It's a moot point in right. regards to the repeal of your decision. Right. Right. Okay. It is. Yeah. And Mark, that's going on the front portion of the foundation, yes. the back portion is the, is the new construction. Correct. Yeah. Good. Is there any other further discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept their request to withdraw without prejudice. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Five zero zero. I told you, Mark, it wouldn't take very long. Okay, the next subject is under other business. It's back to 35 Lincoln Street, AKA the Met. So we sent you away last week to come back with some information. So I'm going to let, turn it over Perfect. to you and I'm going to ask you to present what yep. you came up with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, council, um, Matt Zucker, Reading MKM. So we had some homework at the last meeting. Uh, I'm going to start with the landscaping matter first, if that's okay. Um, so at the last meeting, we actually went back and we looked at our chart of trees and shrubs. And while when we looked at them, we, we have a lot more total, we realized we actually had a few less trees. So we went out since then and planted um, additional trees along Prescott Street, a few, um, one in the back uh, southwest corner of the building. Um, and we're at, actually able to find a Japanese duatra. Um, that we wasn't usually who we get it from, but we called around and we planted that um, 
uh, on the corner where um, it was requested by the neighbors. It was, it was shown on the original plan, and we were able to find one, and we planted one there. Um, so what we have done is, one, we updated the chart um, on here, the comparison chart of deciduous and evergreen trees. Uh, on the ZBA plan from the comp permit, we had 35, we now have 36. And on the ZBA plan, we had three shrubs, and now we have 50 total shrubs there. So we added a lot more shrubs. The ground cover is into, we, it's, in, it's ivies, and we have a, a bunch of those. Um, we also act, act our landscape architect, too, to calculate the areas um, on both plans of landscaped areas. Um, and we had, um, he redid the calculation. We had 5,900 uh, landscaped area on the ZBA plan, and we had uh, 6,250 on the new plan. So we actually have more landscaped area on the new plan. Uh, most of that is um, on Lincoln and Corner, the uh, right there, uh, on the corner there in the front, and some of it's on the um, eastern back corner there uh, on our neighbors on Washington Street. And also, we planted um, along the path where we could plant. We planted some um, some shrubs there along that path. So um, all in all, we have uh, uh, more than what was on the ZEBA plan, both in uh, number and in area. Um, so uh, we have pictures, but uh, you know, you we did do a site visit. I know many of you walked it. Uh, you said the approved area was 5,900, not the 40. Yeah, I I made a typo on that one. I wanted to make sure I because um, on the plan, that's what he. If you look at the, the landscape plan, also too, our landscape architect states, um, certifies the, the landscaping shown on the as-built landscaping plan is approximately equivalent to the number of trees, shrubs, ground cover, and landscaped area shown on the landscape plan dated December 14, 2016, which was our ZBA plan three years ago now. Um, he also calculates the landscape area proposed on the landscape plan dated December 14th was 5,990 square feet and the as-built increased land area is 260 square feet for a total as-built landscape area of 6,250 square feet of landscape area. But that's on the, um, if any, I, is, I did send out that plan but it's certified on the, the bottom of his uh, landscape plan that was dated December 16, 2019. So, um, just some pictures we took at different angles. Um, obviously, wintertime night was harder to see, but um, we uh, um, I think we that if there's any questions, uh, we could if you want me to go into the lighting or do you want to just uh, deal with the landscape one first? How do our abutters feel about what I assume you presented all this to them? Um, our my. my the butter that will talk to me, Jean Thomas, was uh, I could read the text from her the day we planted, thanking me for adding more trees and following the plan. Um, our butters down here specifically requested that the Japanese to watch a plant will be put there because it will grow tall. Um, so I, we put it there, um, and you know, uh, they're, they're, I haven't heard from them since. I reached out to them saying, I met you on site. You asked me to. But I fence and landscaping, I've done that. You know, any comment and, you know, it was better, but you'll never be good enough. So that was basically it. So I, I uh, the, the fence really, back, you know, the fence was actually never on the approved plan. And that was a good suggestion by some of the neighbors. And I actually thanked uh, Jean Thomas was one of her suggestions. Uh, it was a good suggestion and we know one we didn't do, you know, obviously talk about during the comp permit, but it's there now, and as you can see, it has, you know, multiple uh, beneficial impacts by having it there. And uh, I'm glad that it was brought up and we did it. So I think the fence is the biggest thing there. So okay. I don't see any of them here tonight. Before we get on to the lighting, does anyone on the board have any questions relative to the landscaping? I'll start with Nick over here. I don't have any questions. Well, no, this is uh, what, what's been submitted is actually what I was looking for at the last meeting. And I apologize. Uh, we, uh, we have an increase, actually, over what the uh, ZBA approved plan was of uh, approximately 1,600 square feet of landscaping. Uh, it's, 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 it, it's 260 actually. I, 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 pulled, I, he, he, I made him recalculate it just to make sure. And it's on the 
um, plan I submitted. He, he's what he certified. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's what we, you were discussing earlier. Then sure. Yep. Uh, on it. And uh, actually, I'm glad to see we uh, we did take a site walk around there, and I was glad to see some plantings by that eight foot fence on the property uh, that they have bought on Prescott Street. And uh, obviously, they'll they'll take take a while to get to maturity, but. Uh, we do have plantings in there, whereas the last time there were no plantings on that side. Uh, so uh, no, I'm I'm satisfied now. I I would consider it uh, an insignificant change on the landscaping parts uh, right now. John, any comment? I would concur with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Actually, I was very impressed because I, I did visit it earlier this afternoon before it got dark, mm -hmm. so I was able to see. Um, or perhaps some neighbors would see as well as the individuals who, who did the rent, renting on the, on the, on the site in the, in the building. Um, I think uh, that fence was a great addition. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you following through with that made a, a, a big difference, um, certainly to the neighborhood, or should be it's in the neighborhood. Um, <coughs> I'm also uh, liking the idea um, that on <coughs> on situations like this, uh, the board does more site visits uh, because there's a big difference between seeing it on paper Absolutely. and actually seeing it on site. Um, having a tour of the building certainly didn't you know, dissuade me either. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was very well done. Um, so I have. On the landscaping, I thought the addition of the bushes and in along that uh, westerly side was, was was great, and the and the fence added to it. So I yeah. find it totally inconsistent and inconsequential change. Eric, nothing. Lori. Um, I agree. I concur with our the rest of the panel. Um, that has spoken. I appreciate that you have taken thoughts of other ways of landscaping into account, such as vertical surfaces. Okay. And I don't have any fundamental problem with it either. Just for Vanessa's benefit, uh, we did have a site walkthrough in the dark tonight before the, the session, so we've all had an opportunity to see it at night, and I have walked around it during the day myself, not today, but other times. And uh, I find it quite satisfactory. So I won't take a vote on that one at the moment. We'll talk about the lighting, and then perhaps we can cover them both under the same vote. So let's talk about the lighting. And I do appreciate the the, the site visit. I, it is very helpful, even you know, from our perspective, to finally see to, for us to see things when it's built, as opposed to when you go through plan review um, just on paper. The site visit um, for lighting was actually at night is, is obviously way better than for the lighting part than it was for the landscaping mm -hmm. portion. Um, so uh, um, what we did just to you know, give you an idea is on our conceptual plan, that was back, back when we, we, we highlighted the property line and we went around and took the foot candles at the property line on the northeast, east, southeast, south, north, and southwest. Um, and we did a chart of each one and got some averages. We then did the same thing for the um, as-built lighting plan, um, and I, I did uh, uh, send you that, but what you, you'll find is on total average, the as-built plan is less foot candles at the property line. Now, um, when you go through southwest and all the sides, um, there's a couple where we're slightly higher. When I say slightly, it's um, we're 0.14 foot candles instead of 0.08 foot candles. Or you know we're 0.39 instead of 0.28, and some spots were lower. We're 0.19 instead of 0.95. Um, but the the few spots that we actually are even slightly um, different um, is where the fence is, anyways. And where we've heard complaints from the neighbors, we're actually um, lower. We're an average of 0.1 foot candles instead of 0.15 on the southwest side. Um, and and seeing it at night too, I, I think. 
the building isn't bright. I think the biggest issue we had with any lights was just lights left on in vacant units, which we've uh, really worked hard now to make sure those are all off if people aren't there. And, and even one of the neighbors when I was in the building last week sent me a note saying, I think the bill lights and unit in the southwest corner of 43 are on. I know you're there. Can you shut them off? I was impressed she knew that I was there. And I'm like, anytime, that perfect. We'll shut them off. So I think that's gone a long way into some of the uh, issues neighbors may have had. Um, those lights are also in the garage on, on sensors. Um, I think I did a site visit with some people before and they got to see um, when they were off versus when they were on. Um, so I think all in all, um, we're less foot candles at the property line than we were before. And um, we also have that eight foot fence everywhere. And it, that is a true testament of seeing it. it it's, it's a couple feet from the building, it's dark on the ground. It, there is lights there that are on, but uh, that's more units. And street lights there, I think, are brighter uh, than these lights. Um, so again, I, you know, I, that's why I felt it, and I really appreciate the board coming to see it at nighttime because you uh, get a much better sense of what uh, the the issue was that was brought up. So, um, yeah, any questions on the lighting? I'll start over here. Hillary, do you have any questions? We didn't do this already. We were going to walk through uh, Eric, so I assume you don't have any questions. Nope. Right. John? No, in fact, uh, <coughs> with some of the parking spaces, I would have said that uh, you'd have maybe some tenants who would say, geez, I'd like more light like more <laughs> when I'm getting out of my car or whatever. But yeah. I, I think that the, the intention was this efficient light in, back, in the backdrop that uh, you can see well enough to get in and out of your car as a tenant, but it did, uh, it never reached beyond the fence. Um, so I, I thought it was uh, well done. Um, and it, again, I don't see it as being um, a problem, so I'm, I'm very much in favor of it. Robert? Uh, no, after, after looking at it tonight, and I think last week when I was looking at the photometric, uh, it didn't look like it was a, a significant uh, change from what the uh, uh, approved plan was, uh, what the as built. And then again, they, they supplied a chart tonight showing what the foot candles are at the property lines. Uh, in a couple places, yes, they, they've increased a bit. Uh, but again, as John says, they put an eight-foot uh, uh, solid fence there, uh, opaque fence, and uh, I don't see a lot of light splashing over. And actually drive, driving down Prescott tonight to the site, uh, I'll have to say it is not obtrusive at all in regards to lighting. You don't even notice it uh, up at the intersection of Washington Street, which is the closest intersection, uh, Washington and Prescott, and looking uh, would be easterly then down Prescott, you don't really, it doesn't jump out at you at all. The, the brightest light on the street I saw was actually across the street from it on a, 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 on a parking lot across the street at a uh, multifamily home across the street, and they have a, a bright light in their parking lot that's that's kind of the brightest light in the area I think. So I, I don't have an issue with it, no. I, I think it's an insubstantial change, in, inconsequential in regards to, you know, a tenth of a foot candle here or, or what. Yeah. Nick, I think I, I already know you. I, mean, I pretty much concur. It looks like it's about two-thirds as bright as the plan we originally approved. Um, I did have a question about the landscaping if we go back for one second. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. I'm curious how many, I know you've done some ancillary improvements to the abutters. Um, the driveway comes to mind. Did you plant any trees or shrubs <laughs> Don't up, please. on yes. any other people's properties? We I'm did. curious we did. We, uh, if you can talk about those numbers. How many trees did we plant on our abutter property? Uh, seven. Oh, seven. So seven additional trees. We went uh, door by door and asked if they wanted something. Um, yeah and worked in conjunction with them. A couple neighbors didn't because they were full. And in fact, if you saw the site, we worked so much, there was one big tree that was literally right where the fence went. And we really struggled. How do we keep that? We didn't want to take it down. They didn't want us to take it down. We didn't, and we actually built a fence around it. Um, 
and we planted, you know, on all those um, three or four houses there on Washington Street, we planted seven trees total, yeah. Great. All right. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Uh, just so everybody's aware, uh, a lot of those lights are, are centered, so they go on and off based on things that happen, like the parking spaces and then the actual drive driveway through the garage. You just Two-thirds shut off. No. Um, they're on a timer at, at night. Yeah. Um, Two-thirds will shut off. I, I think it's five minutes. I think for some reason that's the magic number in garages for those lights. Um, and, I, you know, I, I know what it's like when they're off. I, I know people here have done a site visit and seen them when they're off. But one-third have to stay on for safety purposes. <coughs> but uh, I, I, even when they're all on, which you, when we did the site visit tonight, they were all on. Um, you'll find it like two in the morning is when they're off more at six o'clock people have come and go every couple minutes so those generally tend to stay on then it, you know by eight o'clock it's quieter there um, so they're on motion sensor um, in sections not just all one there's like eight sections so um, if somebody comes in just goes in one spot those ones will turn on but the other two-thirds will stay off in the other section oh, when John showed up tonight he turned one of the sensors on <laughs> yeah, one of the lights on rather yeah yeah Okay, I uh, I kind of feel the same way as the rest of the board. I think this is falls into the insubstantial category, and that's what we we're asked to do here. I just repeat that uh, you came before us with a request for both the landscaping and the lighting to be. You wanted us to add rule on whether it was substantial or insubstantial, and that's what we're asked to do here tonight is to vote on that issue. I think we're in a position now. Is there any other comment from the board before I put this to a vote? Well, what we're voting on is that number one, these are ins some significant and inconsequential changes in the two areas. Right. But we're also accepting the further documentation for the modifications to the original um, yes. company. Mm -hmm. that we gave, gave up. Is there any other comment you have, Chris? No, just the way I, uh, in response to John's comment, the way I would frame the, the board's vote um, is to say that what I think what you're approving is the applicant's request uh, to amend the landscaping and the lighting as depicted on the most recent plans submitted by the mm -hmm. right. land, landscaping and lighting photometric plan submitted by the applicant, I believe, earlier in the day. And I think we can, we can probably administratively capture the date of those plans, but that's that's what you're approving as part of this change. So you're so just so you're you're approving the amendment, but you're tying it to something specific. So we're doing the two things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we can lump the two together I think in terms of oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, well, I would say so. So would, uh, should we consider that the motion? <laughs> since, since you people did the, the <laughs> comprehensive permit, I would assume you guys would write up that change as well. Sure. Okay. Do we have a second to that? Is that right? no, I, don't know if any, I don't know if anyone in the public had any comment. Oh, you had a good point. <laughs> oh, I don't even. That's right. We haven't opened up the public yet. Okay. Has anyone no, else no, that, that subject? Exactly the right thing to do. <laughs> I'll open it up for public comment. Anyone wants to speak on that subject? Would you please stand and raise your right hand? Thank you, sir. Seeing none. Then I'll close the public motion. <laughs> we have a motion, and we have a second. I think the voting members are Nick, Bob, myself, and uh, and Hillary. Huh? And Hillary. And Hillary. Yeah. All those in favor of calling this insubstantial? I think that's is now, is now what the uh, mass housing, the wording is, it's an insubstantial as opposed to a substantial change? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an insubstantial. Yeah. And accepting so all in favor of calling both of these an insubstantial change to the comprehensive permit? All in favor? Unanimous five zero zero. Now, the other issue that they came to us with is is signage. We haven't addressed that tonight. I guess what I'd like. To <laughs> 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 I'm 
just talking about is how we are going to address the side shit. Okay? I guess I would ask for a comment from you. Well, I think I have in front of you, as the, part of the staff report, the request that you just partially acted on. You know, the same initial letter requesting a change to the project included um, landscaping, lighting, and signage. So they've, they've asked that you approve the signage as depicted on plans shown in that submission from a month ago. I forget, forget the exact date. Um, they've asked that you approve those plans as another insignificant change. Um, and I expect that there was, we didn't get to talk about that two week, at the meeting two weeks right. ago. But I, I think the way we left it at that at the conclusion of that meeting is that the applicant wanted to present the signs to you um, tonight. So I would, I, I would imagine that they've got a uh, presentation um, ready to go. Um, so the, the board would consider approval of that signage under the same standard uh, you just applied to the other two categories, which is, is the addition of this signage an insubstantial change to this project. Um, I think what I said last time, uh, and that's entirely up to the board. It's entirely in your in your um, discretion to determine the significance of the addition of the signage to the project. I would just point out that compared to the other two categories, um, this is on a slightly different footing in that when the board conducted its first public hearing on the application that led up to the approval, um, it discussed landscaping and it discussed land and all of the other aspects of the project. But my memory is, is that the board did not discuss signage at, at any point during that public hearing. Um, it included in its dis written decision a condition that, either a finding or a condition, that it was not approving any signage whatsoever as part of that decision. So this is, I think, the first time the board is looking at or reviewing or talking about signage for this particular project. So I think there is some, um, what that suggests to me is that if the board determines that, that is properly considered in a public hearing, uh, when it hasn't considered the issue at all before, that would be, I think, somewhat more defensible uh, under this substantial and substantial standard. Um, than the, uh, than, than the other two categories, where it looked at it extensively and the applicant made some tweaks. You know, that's, it's more likely that those tweaks are insubstantial when you looked at it in the first place than here, where you haven't seen anything. Um, if, and, and I think it would be, I don't want to decide it for you. It's up to you guys to decide it. But it would be somewhat more defensible, I think, if you wanted to, uh, if you found merit in the idea that this signage needed be considered after notice in a public hearing. Uh, you did yeah. And you can look at it another way and say, you know, there's no requirement for signage in the comprehensive permit. There's nothing in there about that other than it's not included. So you could look at this thing from the standpoint of it is a, it's not a change. It's a new requirement. Yes, it's a new, new application. New I application, yeah. whatever it is. Okay, that's yeah. you could look at it that way. Yep. Do we? Do we? The question I have, Chris, and I don't know that I guess this is a legal. How do we look at this? Since it's a, it, it was not in the approved body B plans, comprehensive permit, and we this in fact now just have to go through regular zoning and. Uh, you know, like somebody was applying for a new sign on their building downtown or changing a sign, they would, they would have to go and uh, go, go through a regular application for a special permit for I, a sign? I think it's important for your analysis to have, to figure out, and I think it's up to the applicant to explain to you, exactly how much this sign either complies or does not comply with the zoning bylaw. Because remember, when they first submit their application to you, what, they, what they're asking for is waivers of the zoning bylaw. They need, the relief they need from you is they need you to authorize all of the parts of the project that don't comply with your zoning bylaw. So if this sign complies with the zoning bylaw, I think that, that there would be some argument there that this is an insubstantial change. It's still a change to the project. I mean, it, you approve the project with no signage and now it's gone. But if it was something they could do by right, I think it would be easier to find that to be a substantial change. If it's, you know, three times more signage than they would normally be allowed to have, then maybe that suggests 
that this is a significant change that you, yeah. need, to, um, you need to think about. But either, I mean, uh, one point is that you do have the applicant in front of you tonight presenting something. And if you think you can evaluate what they're showing you, you know, based on what all yeah. you've heard tonight, then maybe you're in a position to approve it. If you think, but however, if you think either that you need more information after tonight or that you want someone else to take a look at it, if you want to report from staff, if you want to report from, um, you know, a consultant of some kind, that maybe that's maybe a bit of a uh, bit unusual in a 40B context. But you know, it, the que the question ultimately is, what do you think of the sign? And um, do you need more information about the sign, right. um, or more time to discuss it? I personally, the more I think about it, <coughs> I, I think it requires a public hearing. Uh, I, you know, it's signage, major signage, going on a building in the downtown area here. I think it requires a public hearing. It was never discussed during the public hearings for the original comprehensive permit. And then I tend to wonder, do we, should we even be, if, if it requires a public hearing and a public notice then, and not heard under other business as it is now, uh, do, should we be even in fact discussing signage without a public notice and the public being aware of what's happening? Oh, I think, I think that's a fair question, but I do think the applicant the applicant has the right to come back to you and okay. make its case that, make that, its that case. what it wants yeah. to put up is an ins insubstantial change. Okay. Um, so the applicant ought to be allowed to make that uh, make that argument and attempt okay. to convince you. Uh, if you're not convinced at the conclusion of their argument, then sure. it's entirely within your rights to find it substantial. And then, and then really the only thing is, that happens after that is we're back in a month. Yeah. Um, after having provided notice to parties in interest that we're going to be considering that. Um, you may, and so, yeah, it did. The, the, the same review will happen again. It'll just be in a slightly different procedural sure. position. Okay. Yep. I had a question for Chris. Yeah. If the board goes through, in a decision, there is no mention of the board taking up any request from the petitioner on signage. Um, either that was going to be pushed back to a later time, but when we closed the hearing for the 40B, we then closed technically the book on it. And the book did not involve signage. So by discussing it this evening as a change, whichever way we go, are we then opening back the book and can we do that on a 40B? Just open a book that has already been closed and put in print. Yes. I wish I could say that once you issue the comprehensive permit, um, the book is closed on the project and you... No, 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 no. not closed, yep. but because, because the verbiage in the decision says signage was not discussed as part of the final decision because it was not brought up. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that imply that it will be brought up at a later date? Not necessarily. Uh, that's but that that's up to the applicant. If they want to come back in three years down the road and show you something that they didn't show you before and ask that you now authorize it as part of the project, they can do that. Okay. So what you're saying technically is that we need to, to hear the applicant on this this evening yeah. and then make a decision as to which way the board wishes to go. That's all I wanted to call I back. agree that we ought to yep. hear them out tonight. Thank so you. I will turn it back to you. And and they, thank you, Mr. Chair. Obviously, I've heard the initial comments and um, just so, so we could talk signage. We didn't talk specific proposed signage at that hearing at all. But we did talk about what guidelines we had to follow for signage. And in the decision, it does say, um, any signage proposed for the project shall be considered business or commercial in a residential zoning district and shall comply with the business B zoning district regulations. So um, like any sign in a business B zoning, it has a whole set of criteria, one of which is even if it's by right, you still need a certificate of appropriateness from CPDC. Right. The purpose of the comprehensive permit is to do it under one 
board. So when we went back and looked at all that, we actually got one of our signs approved at CPTC. Um, and then this one came up. What's unique is, so while we didn't propose any specific signage, we did have a set of guidelines that this board, in, board imposed into what we should follow for how we design our signage. So under the business B, um, we're allowed two square feet of sign for every foot, linear foot of building. So that's almost 800, it's like 780 square feet of signage we could propose. There's a caveat in that note in the table that says that, that says the height can't be higher than the second floor sill. Now, the code doesn't really take into account 40 Bs and something could be higher. I think the zoning district, you know, it's usually two stories or two and a half and maybe one's three, but the idea was you know, to have the signs, I believe, in proportion to the building and not have it too high. So what we did was design a sign. Um, I did submit that sign, but I, I don't know if everyone has a copy of what was proposed. I have three here if the board would like just another one if they need it or... Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what we had proposed was just a, it's a non-lit sign. I only have three, so... <laughs> we should well, sure, I think I got yeah. but I got you um, so what, what's, what's unique here is that uh, if this sign was dropped below the second floor sill, it meets all the requirements. We're, we're um, uh, less now. Now, there may be some others, and we haven't put up any signs yet. So the idea is I think you could have, and, and obviously we have the zoning enforcement officer here, um, and we've, we've discussed signage. Uh, we have some good discussions about it. I believe you get um, one for each facade. Um, so right now we have two canopies and um, on the awnings that you saw. Um, but at that sign, if you take that whole square footage, is 170, 180 square feet of signage. Significantly less than the 800 we could do um, if we dropped it below the sill of the second floor. Um, there's a lot of things we could do that make you know no sense. Not that we could do all of these, but that's kind of areas under uh, business B signage where we could put signage as long as it's below the second floor sill oh. and we have uh, not um, you could never do all those don't get me wrong we're just ideas I'll show Mark and he'll appreciate oh no that's the old that's the that's the new one you know, like my I guess I won't appreciate it no no you won't appreciate it <laughs> but we did figure out fob so you may have lost a dollar <laughs> um, so you know I, I, I hear the board's initial take that on first glance, any signage has to be, you know, uh, it was never discussed, so it has to be something that's substantial. But um, what we're proposing versus what we was allowed in the decision, which did say business B, if we were a different zone where we were asking for more than what was allowed in that zone, um, I would say, you know, not another story. Here we're asking for less than what was allowed, and the only waiver we would need on that sign um, is the height of the second floor sill. And I think from a practical standpoint, when you go out there, having one sign on that brick facade on Lincoln Street facing the train, it's not lit, um, as opposed to something you could we would have done on Prescott, or it, it, I, I'm not sure what the impact is, but I, you know, I respect that it, it specifically was never brought up then. It's just I, I, I'm not sure there's any, that, that, you know, it's not, you know, there's, it's not, nothing's changing, that's what we're proposing, and, and, you know, I think it's less than what was actually allowed under the decision, um, but that specific sign wasn't proposed then. So it, it presents a unique circumstance where I understand, I've sat on the board on its face, it looks like it would be a substantial change. In reality, maybe it's not, and even if we go down that in, in a public hearing, I think, um, you know, I think it's a tasteful sign and less than what, uh, you know, smaller than what the code actually allows us in that, in that district. And I think complying with the code, putting it below the second floor, you know, and, and you know, we could wrap the windows. I mean, there's things we could do that just, you know, we really wanted to make a tasteful sign for that one facade and, and not be too imposing, but still signify the business. And I think we've accomplished that, but, um, I'm sure, uh, uh, the zoning officer has comment too, but um, happy to answer questions. So, on that. But you're still proposing the first. Um, it, it's it's um, 
I'd be interested to hear the take. Uh, the, you mean the which first one? The well, well, the, the first one you passed out tonight. Yeah, yeah, the, that one. Yes, right. that that would be on the facade. That. Yeah. That's, what, this is, that's, that's, what, we're, that's really what we're involved. what we're asking for tonight is that uh, a waiver from the second floor sill um, is what we're specifically asking for tonight. That the note it, in their in their chart on business B zoning has that note second floor window sill, um, which I get the the theory behind it. Just right. isn't as practical in this case. So that that's what we're specifically asking for. And what's the total square footage of the uh, the three signs that you're looking at? Which is important? The two awning signs. The two awning the signs. Two awning. Yeah, those, those signs are uh, uh, they're approved. I think they were like 50 square feet each. They're really small signs, if that. Yeah. Um, the met sign that you have. If you most? if you take the whole rectangle of the like no the, the if you put a box around it, uh, um, I think it was about 180 square feet. Yes, yeah, just under that. Yeah. Right, right. So, so for my right thing is 17 feet by 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. we'd be, you know, I, I think, which is substantially less than uh, what would be allowed wow. as long as it's below the sill so. of the uh, second floor. Yeah. Yep. I believe so. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, as you said, this. And there'll be signs on here, these permanent signs on the awnings and on the uh, facade yeah, it, it, will not be lit. There's no lighting associated with them at all. No, there's okay. lighting that's on the building that's all it was that you saw tonight. Okay. In fact, nope. we actually had some lighting we're changing out because it wasn't nope. dark sky compliant and we're going to nope, change true. those out. Um, uh, so we always hear that from, yep. you know, a concern of about it is the lighting at yep. all. This wall sign wouldn't even be externally <coughs> That one isn't no. That we, I we, to be honest, we wish it was, but there's no power up there now, so it would not be. <laughs> it'd be nice. I think it'd be a nice feature. Just for clarification, Mr. Chairman, like I said last meeting, on the application it says externally illuminated by others. Right, and and um, I, I, and, and there there is none. We commit okay. to that. So we uh, thought that there was power left up there, and that's why it was on there as that, but there isn't. readily accessible. Yeah. I'd like to hear what uh, Mark would have. What's your view of that proposed sign? My view is probably very obscure. Because I look, I look at it a completely different way than the applicant does on what the facade really is. He's counting the whole front of the building along Lincoln Street as the facade where I don't. Mm -hmm. I count the section of the brick where that sign is going to be mounted Beyond. as the facade because uh, that sticks out approximately a foot from the two surround the two walls on each side of it. So my square footage number would be based on that brick area where the sign is being mounted, not the whole length of Lincoln Street. So the idea that there's an 800 square foot sign looming someplace based on square footage numbers. I don't buy the argument, in my opinion. What would, what would that calculate out to be, Mark? I don't know what the I don't know at the moment, but it's bigger than a, it's not 171.7 square feet. Substantially yeah. large. Well, that's yes. right. I think I think maybe we need to have the building inspector look at it and do some new calculations. Because well, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but when we do these signage that have no backlighting to them or anything and they're just the letters put up there don't we do you do a, a rectangle around that yes. sign and that's the square footage of the sign that yes. that rectangle okay. it's not the actual inches of the letter itself it's not the actual square footage of the letters it's that rectangle around the letters yeah okay so right now we have so, basically 172 square feet of signage or something like that to that effect. So, no, so respectfully, I've already looked at this application. I issued a denial letter back in June. Yeah. I don't need to look at the application again to do the numbers. The applicant is supposed to supply the numbers. Yeah. No. Okay. I was like, I made a, I made an opinion that it exceeds the allowable square footage. 
and it extends past the second floor cell height. Right. And that's why I issued a denial letter back in June. Right. Nick, do you have any comments on this? I mean, it appears the applicant could do this by right if the numbers are correct below the second floor sill, and you're really asking just to go up one more sill. And I am, I and, and, and I, the zoning, I'm a zoning nerd, and we have uh, debated this um, back when we even debated what district, how do we calculate things. Um, just so we're clear, it's the, it's the portion of the wall of the building occupied by the establishment to which the sign relates. And the definition of facade is also in the zoning um, bylaw. Um, so, um, but you know, I, 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 interpretation wise, um, I think that the bylaw was designed to say if you have a building facade that in whatever your business occupies, where it's here, it's our whole thing. But you know, it, the nuances of uh, a 40B and signage in a, in a building B zone, but um, uh, you know, if you take other portions of our building where we have no signage all along Prescott Street that's 200 square feet. Um, I don't think it's you know, everywhere there's a jut. If you jut, if we had designed it straight, we would get that whole count. But because we've architecturally bumped it a foot or not, I don't think it should penalize the uh, a signage calculation. I, I don't think that's um, how it reads, but um, we will, I'm sure, continue so, to. So, so that's one issue. <laughs> so I'm looking at two things, the actual size of the sign and then the height of the sign. I don't think, to me, the height is an issue going up one more floor considering you know, proportionally the size of the building and how this is a comprehensive permit. But I think the size to me is going to matter. So I would feel more comfortable knowing, you know, what is actually coming to a consensus allowed there by right. And I don't know if we have that information right now. Uh, for, first off, it, I, I, I think we have to have a public hearing on this. I, I really do. I, I think signage is a big concern in town, and it was not any signage discussed at all in the original comprehensive permit, and, and I really think we, we do need it in this particular one. Uh, I, 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 do, I do like the sign. I like the no lighting on it. I, I like the just having the main sign on uh, Lincoln Street. Uh, and, and foregoing any large signage at all other than what is it just on the canopy on Prescott Street uh, on that. But, but I do I do think we need a uh, public hearing and I do have a comment on the, the temporary signage but we're not talking on that yet maybe that's a that's part B here tonight yeah uh, the temporary yeah. signage yeah I think those are good yeah. good points I appreciate yeah. John, any further comment for you? Um, I guess I'm, when I asked Chris about opening the book, per se, on the decision, uh, the reason I asked that was because um, if indeed that's possible to do, or plausible as well as possible to do, then um, This board makes that decision because it's still part of the comprehensive permit, and therefore we do not have to go back to a, a formal um, application for uh, relief. Um, and I was ready to, to move in that direction tonight before hearing Chris, but knowing that uh, the applicant has the ability to do that is is coming before the board requesting that, I think that the board has to make it, well, in my opinion, the board has to make a decision on what is plausible and what is not. What I don't understand, like Nick, um, I don't have the problem of going above the second floor. As presented here, going to the third floor does not bother me at all. Architecturally, I'll have to... I'll have to <laughs> go to our architectural specialist here, but uh, it fits there 
in the building. <coughs> it does not fit at the second floor level, number one. Right. But what I can't get past is maybe it's too large, but I don't know what total square footage in that box we can allow. I'd have to go back to Mark and see what that is. And can we modify that? And is the applicant interested in modifying the 171 square feet to something in the order of, and I don't know what in the order of, 125 square feet or I don't know what that, I don't know what that box would contain in that's what I would need to know before moving on. But I, I, from taking Chris's lead on that, I would say that we need to, as one member of the board, we need to uh, to look at making it um, part of the decision that we're making in the consequential or inconsequential changes uh, that the applicant is asking for. So I'll just leave it at that right now because I, I don't have that information. Eric, any comment for you? Um, <clears throat> that's really a question for Chris. So what we would be, as is presented here, would be a substantial or insubstantial change. But if this was coming before us for the 40B, it would be a waiver that they would be requesting. Mm. So I feel like even though in form it's uh, insubstantial or substantial, in substance, it's it's a, an effect. It's a retroactive waiver. <clears throat> so I would f maybe not technically require. I feel like the public should be given notice of that so that they can have an opinion on it, which I'm sure they do. And maybe they don't realize that that's something <clears throat> that um, you know is is actually going to be you know talked about because it's not an advertised agenda item. It's just in the other business. So I think since it is going to be such an impactful decision uh, on the building and everyone that drives by it, I think a public hearing uh, would be appropriate. That said, I think the scale of the sign, the placement of the sign, the aesthetics of the sign, uh, I think they're nice. I think it makes sense what you're looking to do. I just think that you have to give everyone else I think even the most appropriate level of notice, even if we could technically do it, you know, tonight under the way it's been um, put on the agenda, I think that the, an actual formal noticing would be the appropriate way for. That's all I got. Okay. Can I just can I just add one quick comment? Um, I just want to be. Add one slight addendum to my earlier comment. I think, which is that there's a, there's. Pers in addition to the procedural reason, which is that um, that you didn't consider this before and the applicant didn't present on this before, I think it's also important to focus um, on the, if there if you perceive a need for the to take this to a public hearing and have people come in and be able to talk about it, um, there should be an element there also of there being this sign being significant. Um, a significant change to this project, either because it's large or higher than would otherwise be allowed. Um, it, it, it's there's a need for a public hearing, but there needs to also be an accompanying. If, if that's the way you, the board wants to go, there should also be an accompanying finding that there's some significance to this line and what the applicant's looking to do. <laughs> um. I agree that the sign portion, I've been driving by looking at the brick facade and there needs to be something, it feels like there, that's a place, a good place, it feels like it was designed for that area. Um, something that is not coming through in the black and white drawings with the brown um, color um, sign is that I'm worried that we're worried about the sign and it's going to be lost on a brick facade. The brown and the brick. I, I can't see how that's uh, drastic or is, I've lost the word, um, contrasting enough that it will be not illuminated and we're discussing a sign that's going to be lost as on the facade. 
just didn't. Yeah, I'm quite sure. <laughs> no, well, no, I mean, it, it's a good point. It's, it's, it's a point well taken. We, it's The colors of the building is all that, those tones. Mm -hmm. So it would be, you know, if you did a bright red sign, that, no, bright blue sign, it may. So it, we, we certainly. Um, or even a darker. Yeah, when we got the swath from the sign maker, we have a bunch of choices. Um, it's a point well taken. Thank you. So if it's not illuminated and it's not being illuminated from exterior and you're putting signs that are the same color on a background. Maybe, maybe we should request it to be illuminated then. So that's just, I'm, that's something that concerns me that we're discussing all this and it's going to be lost. From my vantage point, uh, I think it's a tasteful sign. I think it it looks good. I think what you tried to do, what they, what you tried to do, Mark, and I, and this is the way I read it, is you tried to center the thing on that facade. Yes. Yeah, so because essentially it's similar distance from the top of the roof down to the sign and from the bottom of the we, sign down to the ground. We tried to skip. We tried to, to center it in there. The architect designed the sign. Just to come out and be yeah. where it is. Mm. I think it's not a bad looking sign, and I. Uh, and, that plus the other two, I think is tastefully done. The only hang up I have is how do we handle it? In, in fact, I would think it's almost an insubstantial change. Okay? <laughs> if you, I mean. Right? But the question is how do we get through this and what's, what's the right procedure to go? I, 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 I kind of lean in terms of. Uh, I mean, ultimately. It ought to be a, 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 a new application. Ultimate. What? Ultimately, I think he, he, what we need to, um, I flagged earlier the differences between the other two of this, that you hadn't looked at the sign before. But ultimately, the determination you need to make tonight really does, in the end, boil down to whether this sign is going to have an impact on uh, the residents of the project or the residents of the surrounding neighborhood or the people who are driving up and down the street looking, looking at this thing all day. So if you all find it to be a reasonable sign in its design and in its size that is not going to have any real impact on others, then I think it's within your jurisdiction to find it to be an insubstantial change. If, however, you find its height or its size uh, to, to cause some impact on the surrounding neighborhood, then you could find it to be significant and we could all be back in a month talking about it. Uh, more. Um, it really does boil down to a question of, of impact. And it's a tough one with signage, but that, that's, that's the determination that the board uh, collectively needs to make. My view of the thing is that it, to your point, I, I can't find, I can't think of very many people that would have fault with that sign as it is proposed, okay? It's not lit. Uh, maybe it needs a little color. I don't know. I think we'll discuss that one further. Question that, but uh, it's tastefully done, and I, I can't imagine the, the, the residents or the neighborhood would have a problem with it. So, if that's where, you, <laughs> okay, I can say I can go the insubstantial route. I can. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wrestle follow. with the issue that it wasn't part of the original request. It's brand, It's a new requirement. Okay. G g given your your comments on your thoughts on the sign itself, I don't think I could fault a finding that it's that this is an insubstantial change. If 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 the sign looks okay and you're not you don't think it's going to have any impact on on the surrounding neighborhood, um, it, it, that that would support a finding that this is an insubstantial change. So, I have a question. If it was in substantial change to allow the height, would they have to go back to CPDC for this approval of the wall signage? And there they would discuss lighting, color, etc. No, I mean, all of the, um, the board has within its jurisdiction, it's within the board's jurisdiction to approve the sign as presented. And that would be all and the room. Really yes. okay. 
The CPDC has nothing to do with body bees. Hmm. Well, we've got a, a, a mixed view here, okay? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to say, again, the inconsequential aspects of it. Um, I, can't, I cannot see how it's going to impact the neighborhood. I mean, there's no lighting. Right. Um, you have to drive by it to see it. Well, if you don't like it, then just don't look at it when you drive by. <laughs> as far as the people who are tenants in the building, um, if you were asking people to, to uh, come and visit you, you'd want to know, where am I located? Mm -hmm. So you have to have some kind of signage. And where this board has had um, the responsibility of determining what should be in the final decision on the on a 40B application, and this being almost virtually completed, um, and the fact that, as Chris says, the applicant has the right to come back and address the board as um, an uncompleted, incomplete addition or modification uh, that we that we would need to hear I think that this gives us the opportunity to to make that decision and uh, again I, I think in, in light of other than the color um, it, it's appropriate uh, in this location um, and the, the signage the two smaller signs CPDC has already uh, met and given the, per the permission to. Uh, that, that decision has already been made before we reach us. That was fine. Um, but the inconsequential aspect of it, uh, this project has been going on for how long now? Ooh, I believe you issued the permit. Two years ago. Three, three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. Well, three years yeah. ago. Yeah. Landscape plan was um, 16. And it's been, it's been difficult to complete, but we have it now complete except for one minor adjustment. Um, rather than going back and uh, creating upheaval in the community again, whether there be only one person coming forward, I mean, it's just another meeting you have to go through to, to do that. And had the applicant brought it up initially, we wouldn't even be here because it would have been already discussed. The actual drawings for the architectural aspects of the project were there. There was just no sign attached to it. So that's not how I walked into this meeting tonight, but this is where I'm hearing that the board has the option of moving, and with town council's uh, direction, at least giving us the opportunity, I guess, to wrap this up. I want to see it wrapped up. That's my thought. Any further comments? I actually have a, a question. Um, us making a decision whether it's substantial, is that a public hearing or a, pu a public meeting, open to public comment? No, no, that's what you're being asked to do tonight, and this is just a, a meeting of the board. It is not a public hearing. Because I worry about uh, Eric's comment about how it was advertised. Like, no one would really know that this was this being was done not signage, right? This meeting, which is your second meeting on the subject. Your first was two weeks ago. When you conducted your first meeting on this two weeks ago, you did not advertise in the newspaper and you did not send mailed notice to parties in interest. Um, I don't know whether there was an, uh, you know, otherwise a general awareness that you were considering it, given the, uh, I know there's been a high level of interest in this issues associated with the construction of the project, but um, I, can't, I can't speak to that. It was not noticed. But that said, I know they reopened it up for public comment. That's not required in the public meeting, right? No, no, no. You, the, the state regulations on 40Bs require, when the applicant makes the kind of request that it made a month ago, which is that you approve these three things as, an, as insubstantial changes, 
the state regulations require you to make a decision on that within 20 days, which is close to, if not, we, I don't know if that's actually enough time to notice a proper public hearing. So you are compelled by state law to make that this first determination of substantiality or insubstantiality within 20 days in a regular meeting. Um, and then only if you define it to be the change to be substantial on its, you know, based on its impacts, would you then f move along a month later to hold a public hearing and to consider the question further. Okay. Uh, and well, that said, I, I, I agree. I don't think that um, the, the sign's unreasonable. I think it's within the scope of the project. And I would lean more to not have this be something substantial. In, insubstantial? I think it would be insubstantial. I mean, I'm, I know I don't know the exact what would be allowed by right square footage, but, I mean, just looking at it, I mean, it's, it seems to fit within the project. And it's not obnoxious. It's not lit up. It, it's a pretty mundane color. I think it looks okay. Bob, you want any final thoughts? I, I, I would agree with everybody's opinion on, in regards to the sign, how it fits with the building. It's, uh, uh, it's not obtrusive. It's not overpowering or anything like that. I think it fits in well. I'm, I'm still, to be honest with you, on the fence whether we, you know. And granted, I think at the last meeting, we did have some people from the public here. And we do not tonight. We may, maybe there's a few, but, but I suppose we could open it up for public comment tonight for anybody. It was the the agenda was on the internet. Was it on the website? Was town's mm -hmm. website that we were discussing this tonight? Mm -hmm. And oh, we did let a others know of the original. Yeah, it just it just was not advertised. Paper. By email. A butters weren't notified, yeah. but it was shown on the uh, town website what the agenda was tonight, yeah. You did receive emailed comments two weeks ago, so if you want to read those into the record or mm -hmm. enter them into the record, then. That's true. It's true. Yeah. And to, to, on that point, most of the comments were on the, te I think all of them were on the temporary side, which isn't, you know, this isn't that, you know, completely right. Right. There was a comment on that, so another subject. Right. You're on the fence. Yeah, Eric, I'm still. Yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not voting on it, but <laughs> I do sense that the board has project fatigue and just kind of wants to get it over with. Mm. But I think, I do think it's a substantial change. You're, it would be something you would need to waiver for if it had come around. Let's assume for the moment that we sit here tonight, we, we vote on, take a vote on a thing and whether it's a substantial or insubstantial, it's considered a substantial change. Insubstantial or substantial? In, and hypothetically, no, I, 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 it's I, I, a majority I decision. It could be 3 2 or whatever. You know. Yeah. And it's, and it's substantial. Okay. Okay? Where do we go from there? If you vote 3 2 to find the addition of the sign to be a substantial change, then. Um, Andrew would go off and prepare notice of a public hearing. Um, and we'd be back in three weeks to a month uh, to open up a public hearing on the addition of the sign. Um, and the applicant would present. You'd have the opportunity to ask all the same questions. And we'd, we'd have a discussion similar to the one we're having tonight with the possible addition of more members of the public who might have received notice but not otherwise known about tonight um, to add their comments to the record. But the discussion about the site, I think, would be rather similar to the one uh, that we're having. Okay, and Bill, let's, let's assume the other way. Let's assume we take a vote and, then, and, and the three out of three to two say it needs a public hearing. Oh, I mean, it's insubstantial. Is that is that then the, uh, that it, the sign is deemed approved and they can put it up on their project without any further uh, public process or um, approvals from, 
from this board or any or anyone else in town. The the sign is if you if you vote three two to find this sign to be an insubstantial change to the project, it's over. The sign is something they can build on their project. As depicted, I mean I want to be careful to as depict tie it to the depiction the renderings that they've provided you. Yeah, as the they could put up that sign as shown on the rendering and nothing other than that. Um, but that could be built. Okay. I'll give you one last shot at it, Hillary. Does the, huh? uh, does the public comment on this that is here now, or? Well, I'll, I'll open it up in a minute. Yeah. I'd like to hear what they have. Any comment? Uh, we'll open it up to uh, public comment. Uh, uh, is there anyone who wants to speak on the subject of signage here tonight? Anybody? Then I'll close the public portion of the meeting. And uh, I'll entertain, I guess one way to do it would be to entertain a motion that... It's always in the positive. Huh? It's always in the positive. It's always in the positive. So yeah. I'll entertain a motion uh, uh, that this uh, site has changed. I'll let someone else make the motion. Would you like to make a vote? Yeah. Um, I have one question, sorry. Excuse me. Um, because we, I'm just, this is a, how does this work? Yes, um, since we didn't see this last time, is Eric now allowed to vote, or is that because it's still under other business? Uh, I, don't know. I, think, I think he's not eligible to vote. Okay. So it's going to be you, the other yeah. five of us, okay? Please. There's still the issue of the temporary side. I don't know if you want to handle them differently. I would. It's another. If we could, let's get change. It may change let's based on the way one, first. One at a time. Let's yeah. get this one out way first. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion that uh, that the permanent sign signage proposed for uh, the Metropolitan Reading Station uh, be a insubstantial be considered an insubstantial change to the comprehensive permit and this signage is depicted on uh, uh, plans uh, titled building signage sign type a wall sign layouts and details uh, for the met the metropolitan at reading station uh, depicted on a uh, rendering or a plan dated 6-3-2019. And I think also as, as shown on the elevation plan. Uh, I'm read a little better here. Okay, yeah, there you go. Six, uh, again, dated 6-3-2019 uh, uh, by Archtype Sign Works. Uh, on that. So basically the motion is that it's an insubstantial change and the reference is made to the permanent signage uh, plan submitted. One second. One second. Okay. All in favor of treating it as an insubstantial change? Unanimous. Five to yep. zero. Okay. Done. It, you know, I think people had noticed and you know, Okay. Now, I don't know uh, if we're doing anything with the temporary side. We're going to talk about that. Uh, okay. We're, we're, we're going to save uh, the board and Mark. We're going to withdraw that request. The temporary okay. sign. We're, well, we have a sign that's a temporary now that's allowed, that's up there now. And uh, okay. so we'll, we'll, we'll live with that one. There, there was one aspect that I was very concerned about. The temporary sign was to be left up until I, I, there was 95% uh, vacancy. Or there was that only 5% vacancy. Oh, come on. Boy, this isn't a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the intent was to have it up for yeah. a period, short period of time. Okay. So that's what's um, on. So we're just dealing we'll with, with, with the... We'll withdraw that yeah. request. Just dealing with the permanent sign tonight. Bob made the motion. Uh, yeah. But it's, can we wrap this up to all, all in three one. of them together, all in one? The landscape. I the think lighting. you already did. I think you already have. Yeah. You voted all three. All three tonight. Um, so. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll 
either Andrew or myself will prepare a letter tomorrow that'll go yep. out tomorrow that'll just an announce the recite those three votes and the delivery of that letter to the applicant will bless these changes and that's all that needs to happen. We'll, we'll also send a letter on the temp sign with probably for tomorrow. Right. But you have it on. And it's withdrawn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the tour. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Can you put can you, can you put that in writing, man? The temp sign? I, 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 I we have you have till tomorrow. I could do it now if you want me to handwrite it. We've done it before with, uh, you know, I, it, I'm on tape, I'm sure, somewhere saying it. But I'll also put it in writing and, and send it to Chris and Andrew tomorrow. Okay. Or tonight if I could get to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I, uh, sorry, can I use a little bit of space? Do you need me to write it? Yeah, yeah. with draw off? With draw off, that should be simple. Yeah, it should be a one page. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we have nothing else to discuss tonight, so we can let Mark go home. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Miller? I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Yeah, sure. All in favor? How did you know, sir? Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for showing up. Yeah, thank you. Always. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Always. Yeah, help. Thanks. Thanks. Anytime. Glad to see you guys. And I think, I think, you know, the discussion that happened tonight about the sign is exactly what was happening in the public. Yeah. You guys had a discussion. Exactly. I, I well, think it's okay. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, so actually, I think it's it better not even close. We're doing things that say by the on Monday, so I'm gonna get everything changed and ready. I'm gonna put a sign down on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the reason. I think it's called the meeting. I think. Yeah.